second uju uju mean straight straight what does it mean straight now in the modern uh, discourse straight mean uh, are you straight are you straight or are you gay you know <laughs> the modern discourse this is not that straight <laughs> uju it is not that straight what is this straight integrity do we need integrity in our dhamma practice what is integrity your practice has to be always yeah honest at the same time in integral that means you say something now but you don't do that at the end kind of a consistent practice flowing consistent practice dhamma practice has to be a very honest practice that is why it says our practice has to be very integral whatever you think you should be able to practice right and then suju means more straight this is about honesty clearly honesty i would say moral uprightness in other words moral uprightness that means moral uprightness means let's say and i will give you an example let's say you get to see somebody is uh, lying somebody is gossiping ah uh, it's a very normal thing then you notice it uh, see that person is always gossiping and talking all the unnecessary things but when your family members when your people gossip you don't take it that way why because then there is something attached to that thing that means if it is wrong if it is unwholesome it is unwholesome everywhere if it is wholesome even a thief may have a wholesome activity even a somebody that you don't like to accept may have a wholesome activity we have to accept that moral uprightness uh, being able to accept wholesome unwholesome of anybody without any barrier but in our most of lives it is not happening in that way because we bring our uh, favoritism nepotism favoritism we cover it with that thing oh no no it's okay it's okay don't worry let them do that right that is not suju that means if you want to really go in your dhamma path you must have it otherwise your dhamma practice will fall apart slip away fourth one suvacho suvacho means being open being open to somebody who is a kalyanamit good advice suvacho now in the modern society especially in the west now when we are teaching meditation we understand that in the west uh, uh, meditation people don't teach seela to the westerners why is it they don't teach seela they only teach meditation take a seat sit down practice mindfulness meditation and they finish it then they go home they don't talk about seela purposely they ignore talking about the seela why is it in those societies they don't like somebody to tell somebody to tell them this is what you should do this is what you should not do they don't like it so these meditation centers these gurus they want to keep the people they don't go to that end but buddha says without seela you will never practice meditation why you don't have purification it's not a quick fix practice you do something wrong today morning you are able to come to the temple practice meditation go back do the same thing probably that means we need really kalyanamitas who can tell us whether we are doing something unwholesome maybe our mother maybe our father maybe a monk maybe a good friend right anybody otherwise we think whatever we think is right that thought just do it the idea could just do it the buddhist idea is not just do it think about it before during after then you are creating a very positive impact on your actions a speech and the thought how many kalyanamittas do we need we need lot of kalyanamittas at least at the very least how many kalyanamittas do we need noble friends do you all have kalyanamittas let me ask you do you ah see <laughs> we need at least two kalyanamittas noble friends one is the buddha because of his teachings we are learning all these things 
Second is somebody we have to find. Right? That means it's very important that you are open to the right person, Kalyana Mitta, so that your practice will be smooth and consistent. Then Mudu, Mudu mean I would say flexible, soft hearted. Right? Sometimes we may be very uh, stiff, we do not listen to other people, we do not we don't actually, uh, uh, I would say, maintain very flexible thoughts. Right? So, probably we are covering, we are kind of limiting our spiritual journey because of our own activities, our own speeches, our own actions, our own thoughts. So, in the Dhamma part, we need to be soft hearted to a certain extent, depending on who, whom we are associating with. But basically, our nature should be a soft hearted mudu nature. Anatimani. Anatimani means humble. Why is it? If you are not humble, then you are not going to practice the Dhamma. Why someone can be not humble? They think they know better than other people. They have a better practice. But all these are impediments to our practice. Buddha was a very humble person. He always asked everybody to be humble. Learn from everybody. Learn from the vendor, learn from the, even the janitor, everybody learn because this is a uh, practice that we learn together. We may have a lot of things, we may have not studied, understood. If you are humble, you can learn a lot. You will understand a lot. right? But when you are humble, be careful. There are other people who will try to take uh, advantage from you. That means you have to do it with some caution, depending on the person, right? Otherwise, uh, uh, things can go in a different way. But we are supposed to be humble as much as we could, wherever we are living. Then, Santusako. Santusako means content. Is it satisfaction? More than satisfaction. The word content is more than satisfaction. Satisfaction, you are satisfied. But tomorrow you will be dissatisfied. Right? But content means content. It is kind of a long lasting thing. Right? Content, being content. Why we are not content all the time? Because of greed. Is it because of greed? Yeah, greed could be the root, Akusala root. But nowadays, if you can look at the society, and things are very instant. Right? If you want to do anything, you have quick fixes. We are always bothered by the instant gratification. A lot of helplines, when you want food, you don't uh, queue up, you don't line up, you just order, you get a lot of food right away. Where if you want to go somewhere, uh, taxis are just meters away. At that time, you have to call, wait. Uh, if you want to find information, at that time, you you wanted to go somewhere and then meet somebody in person and then know from him maybe writing down on all the notes taken down but now you just go into a bunch of uh, information factory or the false or true whatever unverified or verified right so everything has become easier in certain ways so that people think if they cannot be happy right away because of their mentality they should be unhappy. They should be discontent about it. This is a big problem. So I tell people, do not always go for the instant gratification. You need some patience. Right? That is why the Buddha said, patience, kanti, is the root kusala of the our kusala practice. If you don't have a, uh, patience, you can't practice meditation, you can't do dana, you can't do anything out of here. Patience is the root kusala, the root of the kusala. That is why they say if you want to go see a doctor, you should be patient and becoming a patient at that point. You are a patient, right? Isn't it? Just because you want to see the doctor, you, they will not see you. So, Santusako, uh, uh, content, being content comes to us when we 
try to accept the situation. Actually, why we getting impatient all the time? It is because we don't understand the situation. Let's say you are going to fly somewhere. You are going for an important event. Suddenly the fi flight becomes delayed. What is your uh, normal thought, reaction to this thing? Can you take it? Oh, my have important meeting, event, now everything will be going to be. Because our mind recently has been trained to uh, go through the instant gratification. If things don't happen, we are not able to uh, accept that. Then we have lots of anger, sadness, right? 